Hey everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you how I sharpen a chainsaw chain using my Gramberg file and joint jig. Alright, let's just get right into it. Hi everybody, welcome to Good Day Farm. Thanks for watching. Um, so today I want to do a, a little video on the Gramberg file and joint uh, chainsaw sharpening jig guide. Um, and how I use it. I'm no expert, no professional. Uh, these are just, you know, the way I use it and what works best for me. So, uh, this is the jig here or guide, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, some people just call it by the model number, which is a G106-B. I call it a Gramberg. Gramberg does make other sharpeners. So file and joints, the best thing so that people know what you're talking about. Um, First, let's talk about why I chose this and why I like this uh, guide. I did a little bit of research online. Uh, there's obviously, if you're watching this video, you know as well as I do, there are a lot of different ways and techniques to sharpen your chainsaw chain. What I like about these guides, uh, the different available guides there are, they're very consistent, you know, assuming they're quality and they work like they're supposed to. So they're gonna always sharpen your chain the same every time, and that's gonna help you see uh, your results obviously did it work is it sharp is it working the way it's supposed to and then you'll you'll be able to see on the chain oh that's what it should look like when i do this by hand uh, assuming that's a goal of yours i chose this particular guide simple uh off of reviews that i read so it gets a lot of high marks um uh, everybody seems to think it's a great guide a great uh, jig I went with the Gramberg brand specifically because it got a little better marks and mainly I think that's because it's, it's all metal, but it seems very rugged and sturdy. Some of the other brands use some plastic parts and, and I don't know personally, but, but from the reviews I read, there was some concern that either the uh, plastic could flex a little bit, which would throw your angles off or possibly break. The other reason I chose it is its versatility. This is a guide that literally, if you're round filing your every average day chain, not a carbide or, or some specialty chain, but just your average chain for, for most people for cutting firewood or whatnot, this jig or guide can handle that. Um, you can you can cut cutter tooth angles from zero degrees all the way up to, I believe it's 40 or 45, uh, 45, excuse me, um, on the guide. Uh, you can cut your top plate angle that goes this way anywhere from zero to, sorry, I just have to peek here because I don't know for sure. Uh, again, 40 degrees. I know a lot of chains call for a 10 degree. Um, so so that allows for that. It's got a depth, you know, height stop. So some of your other fixed guides are, are going to sharpen that tooth to a set height every single time. Um, and that may not work for your cutting style. You may want to go a little deeper to get more of the gullet out of the of the tooth, or you may want to go a little higher. I mean, everybody has their own little tweaks that they like to do to their chain once you start progressing in how you file, and you'll learn what works best for you and, and so on and so forth. So those were the two main reasons I chose this jig, is the versatility and the rugged uh, uh, you know, durability. So anyhow, um, I'll do a quick explanation here of what we're kind of looking for on the chain. And I'll do a brief uh, uh, kind of overview of, of the guide itself, and then we'll set it up and go to work. Okay, so for the chain, um, obviously what we're looking at is we're working on these cutter teeth. And uh, you can see here, what we want is this angle to meet up with this back angle here to create a nice sharp point. And then the other thing we're doing, which you may hear about if you're you're just researching and trying to learn how to sharpen chains, is what people call the gullet, or to me, the hook. So on the tooth right here, see this little bit of hook here? This one has a lot of gullet that could be taken out uh, personally. But, but what you wanna try and do is when you file, is remove some of this so that it has more of a kind of half moon shape. Um, so there's a hook there and that needs to come up and meet to that point that you've made up here on that. And so that creates this really sharp chisel, if you will. The gullet helps it pull the chip out and then, um, you know, your chain will cut faster and sharper. And then one last thing I will mention, this here is your depth gauge. This determines, this hits the wood first. And so it's a little bit lower than your tooth. And this will determine how much 
the tooth will cut out of the wood. And so this is, this is really important that you have these set properly so that one, you actually take a bite out because if this is too high, you, your chain won't hit the wood. And, and two, if it's too low, it'll take too much of a bite, which can make the chain really jerky or aggressive, bounce around, or actually just stall the solid. It'll just bite in and not move. So getting these set properly, that'll be the last thing I go over, but there's a, a, a separate guide or gauge, depth gauge, to determine that. And you'll also hear these referred to as rakers, very common terminology for it, but it's just the depth gauge on your chain. Now, here is the guide itself. Um, these can look a little, or anyhow, to me, a little overwhelming at first. When you first get it and you're kind of reading about it and you hear people talk about all these angles and you know, all these adjustments it needs. Um, I think, I know I personally kind of shied away from them uh, years ago when I first was, you know, getting into chainsawing just because it seemed very complicated. Uh, it's actually not. And once you get it and kind of play with it and put it on your bar and, and realize what all these different things are for, it'll all make sense. Uh, the learning curve on this for me and I was really quick. You have uh, a couple different adjustments, which we talked about. Some of them, this is one thing I don't like about the Granberg. If, if it had any, the biggest fault, I guess you would, is I feel like these little adjusters, it's got these little wing nuts um, under here, back here, there's, there's a, a wing nut. This is a different adjuster. Um, they're very difficult to, to access and, and, and open and unlock. For me, anyhow. Maybe because I have too big of fingers, clumsy, I don't know. Um, the, the only adjuster that's really, truly simple is this very top one for the depth. It's just a, a, a knob. And then, of course, the thumb screw over here where you mount it to your bar and these little locks here. They're real simple. Uh, this one back here sets that, that top plate angle. Um, for the most part, most of mine are at zero, so though I don't change that very often, you know, I don't need to, so that one's not a big deal. It's this one here that I personally, um, well, you'll have to change it every time you, you, because you file one side of your chain and then you loosen that up and flip the file all the way around and file the other side. One thing I do want us to talk, touch on, so when you're adjusting this um, to flip the file around, this this will move, okay? So let's say you've got it set, you know, and you're filing all your teeth this way. Now you need to move it to file the teeth the other way. You don't want to just go that far. You got to flip it and rotate it so the handle's over on this side. And that way you're always able to uh, ideally, you know, the way the files are, are cut uh, to cut on your teeth, they're, they're kind of one directional. They're, they don't really work well both ways. So that way you're always filing the right direction on your tooth so that you're actually cutting the best material and saving your file and you're not wearing it out. All right, so I'm gonna get set up on the bar here and I'll just show you a couple quick passes. I'm not... So when you get the guide set on your bar, you wanna tighten this thumb screw back here. Well, first thing you wanna do, so these two little thumb screws tighten up these little uh, guides here. And the purpose of these is to hold this chain so it doesn't flex back and forth. So what you want to do is set those where they're right above, you know, right, set the guide so those are right above the rivets and then kind of tighten them down. They don't have to be super tight, just enough to, you know, so you can still roll the chain, um, but it won't have any flex side to side. Then this part here, so what you saw when I lift this up, this little guide here, stop, that's what your chain will run back up against and it keeps it from going back too far and that's important for your depth this this adjuster here to set the depth of cut. So once you get this above the rivets there and you got the, the guide pretty level, you can just look, um, it's not in the video there, but you can see on the side here, you'll see you know the gap in the bar. Tighten down your thumb screw. Make sure the thumb screw is really tight so the jig doesn't move up and down. And then you wanna set your file. Now this is obviously assuming you've already got your top angle you know set where you want it here. I've set it at 30 degrees. This angle set here where you want it. Um, zero for me. So you set your file in, in the tooth. Now, a good rule of thumb is for the file height to be above the tooth, um, I would say only a, a quarter. I've heard people say a fifth, but you know, just a little bit. You, you don't want it below the cutter tooth and you don't want like half up like that. You know, you kind of got a picture how much of that file needs to be in there so you can cut that rounded half moon shape out of your uh, tooth, you know, out of the gullet. 
So that's one part that you will have to play with as you use it. Um, but as a good rule of thumb, when you first set the depth, now if you've already got a new chain that, you know, a chain that's been properly sharpened, like from the factory, you'll probably feel this will fit right in there and you can just screw the dial up and down until you kind of feel it lock in. If it's a, a chain that is pretty messed up or, or somebody's tried to hand file it, you know, and they've got it all wrong or anything, that part will be a little bit trickier, but don't worry, you, you'll figure it out. It's not that complicated. It might take you one or two teeth and then you can go back and redo those. Um, but again, so you don't want to go too low because you'll just cut into your tie straps and, and you won't actually be sharpening this under edge, you know, under the front of the tooth here. So I always, you know, <coughs> I, I wish I had a better way of uh, a measurement for it for you. It's kind of a feel, but, you know, figure about one quarter or a little less than one quarter of the file is going to stick above. And then I recommend you have, uh, I don't know if it's showing up here in the video, nope. Some type of bar clamp vise, either a bench mounted vise or a stump vise that you've rigged up. This this here I got through uh, treestuff.com. It, it uh, is a chain meister. Um, they make a couple different products, but this one, it, it works just like a stump vise, but it actually mounts straight to a board. It doesn't have the teeth on the bottom. So you can mount this directly to your bench. Um, I mount it to this, this scrap piece of wood here, and I can actually take this in my truck out in the field with me if I want. That way I can file for my tailgate a lot easier than than having to find a piece of wood and, and try and mount a stump vise. Anyhow, I recommend you have something like that to hold your saw solid um, so that the file, you know, otherwise it's gonna be flopping all around on you. So now you've got everything set. Important thing when you're filing, do not drag it backwards against the tooth. One, you'll notice there's a spiral cut on your file that that's cut designed to be pushed up through the tooth. So when you file, you're going to be pushing the file, you know, holding it. It doesn't have to be hard, a lot of pressure, but you want to hold it down and back, you know, so it'll pull that chain against that stop and it'll cut backwards as you push up. And then you want to relax and you can pull it a little bit forward. You can lift it all the way out. I don't like to lift it out because then that stop every time has to be reset. I just kind of pull it forward up against the depth gauge like that and come backwards. That noise you're hearing there is just where it's barely touching the backside of that depth gauge and that's not going to hurt anything. I'm not putting any pressure on it. This depth stop here, this little thumb screw, it hits this bar on the guide and it prevents this guide from going any further back than wherever you set it. Now you're going to set that based off of where when you find the depth of the gullet you want. I always start on my first tooth with it out a little far file a couple times. If I don't like the gullet, I, I turn that in a little bit and I keep going until I get that hook the way I want it. You can hold it two-handed like this and come across and go like that. As you can see, be, you know, sometimes my, my board that I have my vice clamp to will, will move. So I typically just kind of hold the chain back here. Uh, you can put a glove on for that if you want because, you know, even though the chain is being sharpened, the teeth are, are still sharp enough that, you know, you can get hurt. Um, or, you know, just take a rag, whatever, or don't do anything. I don't care. Um, and the key is if you're holding it back here, they'll make sure you don't push the chain forward. So hold it back, hold everything steady, kind of hold the guide if you want, whatever. And then I just go up. Like I said, I'm just going to show you a couple strokes here. And then that's that. Lift it out of the way. You wouldn't have to pull it all the way up like that. I just did it for the video. Move the chain forward. We're skipping this tooth because it's cut at the other angle and I'd have to move the guide. So I want to do all the teeth on one side first. Come to the next tooth, pull it back till it stops. Get that in there. It's a brand new file, so it's kind of jerky, cut and aggressive, but it'll get it. And from this angle, I can see, I know you can't see on the camera, so you just have to trust me here, but I can see when my guide starts hitting that stop. And you'll feel, as it starts getting easier to cut, it's because it's not re removing any more material, right? Because it's not going backwards anymore. So I, I would say we've pretty much reached that point. I can see that I'm hitting the stop. There's still a catchy spot right there, but anyhow. Lift it up, move it out of the way. Progress to the next tooth. And you will continue doing that all the way around the chain until you remove, you know, until you get them all done and then you just move your file the other direction. Now, like I said at the beginning, so when we want to do that, we want to uh, make sure 
you could think by looking at it, I'm gonna go to the next tooth to show you here, that all you gotta do is turn it this far and then now you're on that tooth. The problem with that is, is now because of the way the file is designed to cut, you're actually pushing against this front edge of the, of the tooth. This file is designed, this guide, excuse me, so you can rotate it all the way around like that, flip it over this way, and now we're back to where we're pushing out of the tooth or out of the going, going this way. Um, and that may mean you have to move your, you know, rotate your saw around so that you're on the comfortable side of this or you just use it this way, whatever works best for you. Uh, so that's that. Um, once you've done the whole chain, then the, then the last thing to address on that is the depth gauge. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, so with this guide, you, you just set it right over your cutter teeth like that. And then, like I said, you let the, the depth gauge come through the little hole there. Now, my depth gauge on this chain are probably good because I just did this the last time I sharpened the chain. Yeah, and I can't feel anything. Um, if anything, nope, they're, they're good. So anyhow, but that's, that's where it would go. You move to the next one, same thing. Move to the next one, same thing. Um, so you can check your depth first. I usually just run my finger over it and, and you'll know if it's poking up, you know, considerably over that or not. Or you could just, you know, hit it with your file and see if it's gonna hit. I can't. Okay, so if I did need to take anything down, this is how I would do it. I would just leave this on here. I run my file flat over the top. You know, I'm not trying to go like this or like this because then all I'm doing is filing the guide. Just go flat across, move to the next one, flat across. And as you can tell, well, you probably can't tell on that audio, but I can tell by the sound, all I'm doing is, is running this on the guide. It's not hitting the tooth. So that's it for your depth gauges. Um, and that's something that you only need to do that probably every, in my experience, you know, like every fourth or fifth sharpening or third or fourth, somewhere around there. You don't need to do it every time, but I check it every time. Um, because there's nothing more frustrating than letting these get too tall. Because like I said earlier, as you sharpen this more, these teeth are angled back. So they get, as they get shorter, they get lower, which if this doesn't come down with it, this gets taller, which means you can have the sharpest tooth in the world, but if this isn't letting any wood get to it or letting very little wood get to it, it's not going to cut very well. And I want to say, I, I think a lot of people that are having issues with sharpening their chains, it may be in their depth gauge. So, uh, pick one of those up, uh, very good tool to have and a good thing to use. Now, before we end the video, I just wanted to show real quick. This is, oops, wrong tooth. This is kind of what I was talking about after the gullet's been cut out that, that half moon shape. I know my camera's not focusing very well on that, but, but I think you can see the hook there. Come up to this one, same thing. And then we come up to this one. Where are we at here? Sorry, which I have not sharpened yet. And see how, come on camera. See how straight up and down it is? There's hardly any hook there at all. So, hook, that's what we want. Not what we want. Anyhow, thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to share them down below. Uh, I'll try and address anything that, that I can. Uh, if you have any suggestions or tips for me, if I if you think I did something wrong or, or you know, should have done something differently, please let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm no professional, no expert. This is just how I use the Granberg jig. Works well for me, but I'm always open to suggestions and new ideas and, and that kind of thing. So, uh with that said, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye now.